here for you about uh, the last half of section 4.1 part 1 uh, just want to cover random sampling very very important topic um, as you know we did um, the first part of our lesson basically on what not to do how to sample badly and now we want to um, continue the lesson with what you should be doing which is how to sample well which is basically random sampling okay and for this course the statistical methods we learned they all rely on simple random sampling next lesson we'll talk about different types of random sampling but uh, for this lesson and for most of our course the mathematics we do rely on simple random sampling okay uh, and so a lot of text here for me to read through with you but I'll try and do my best to abbreviate this um, it just says basically that in the bad types of sampling techniques that we learned about before um, people are making poor choices and introducing bias into their uh, um, sampling technique and then getting biased information back um, and so what we want to do is uh, um, remove our personal bias or systematic mistakes that we make that introduce systematic bias and give us inaccurate results uh, from our sampling technique and do, use something that is reliable. Okay, And so uh, for us that involves something called random sampling. All right, And that means the use of chance to determine which member of population are included in the sample. Okay. And so, um, for us, we're using a simple random sample, which is the simplest form of taking a random sample. Uh, it sounds simple. It's simple uh, in the sense that it's not very complicated. You just randomly choose individuals, but it's not actually very easy to do in practice. Um, and so, the textbook likes to talk about drawing names from a hat. Okay, draw names from a hat. All right, that's what the textbook likes to talk about to make you think about random sampling. Uh, I don't particularly love that the most myself uh, because I have seen people try and do something like that, uh, drawing names from a hat and failing to take a proper random sample. But in any case, uh, that's the idea that they want you to get. If you shake up the names properly, all kinds of things has to happen. Uh, to make that really a valid random sample okay simple random sample so please this definition trips people up big time all right so i th people think they understand it but then when you're asked some questions about this it, uh, it appears that you don't really understand it it's not that simple all right uh, excuse me for the pun of simple so um a simple random sample which we abbreviate all the time with srs uh of a size n is chosen in such a way that every group of n individuals in the population has an equal chance to be selected as the sample. All right, uh, and then goes a little bit further here and says an SRS, a simple random sample, not only gives every each individual an equal chance to be chosen, but every possible sample of a given size. Well, that's what the definition said. Gives uh, every group of any individuals an equal chance to be selected. So, uh, I'm try. I'm going to try and illustrate this to you. Okay, if I have a population over here, all right, and my population consists of, let's say, I don't know, a handful of individuals. Uh, how many do I have there? Four, six, ten. Okay, let's say I have ten individuals in my population. Uh, a simple random sample says each one, of, if I'm picking a sample of size one, let's say my sample size is one, uh, and then I'm going to pick one person at random from the population. What that says is each one of the ten people in here have an equal chance of being selected. Okay, so I pick one and I get them there. Hey, and each one of the people had an um, equal chance to be selected. 
So most people are okay with that part of the definition. But what it also says is, if I select, let's say, a sample size of five, what it then says is, each group of five individuals also has an equal chance to be selected. So this group of five individuals has the same chance of being selected as this group of five individuals, which has the same chance of being selected as this group of five individuals, which has the same chance of being selected as this five individuals. And you carry on and on and on until you've partitioned it into every possible combination of five individuals. Okay, so that's quite a different thing. So a simple random sample ensures that both of those things happen. If I'm just selecting one individual at a time, each individual has the same likelihood or same chance of being selected. And if I'm selecting five individuals at a time, each group of five individuals have the same chance of being selected. So I hope you understand that distinction. Um, so the definition actually doesn't say anything about individuals. It says uh, uh, a, simple ra a simple random sample of size n is chosen in such a way that every group of n individuals, that would be the five in the population, has an equal chance of being selected as the sample. But it also does ensure that each individual person has an equal chance of being selected. OK? Please think about that. Make sure you understand that that's not that simple and there are questions that come up about that that students usually struggle with, okay? Uh, all right, so in everyday life, some people use the word random, saying that's so random. In statistics, random means due to chance. So please, uh, I consider attributing something that's random to something that's not random uh, Haram, forbidden fruit in statistics, okay? So please don't do that. Um, we don't say things are random unless they truly have been selected in some type of a random way, okay? Which is not easy to do, actually. You have to, lots of thought has to go into that. Now, we have some good tools for that, but please keep that in mind. Calling something random, most of the time when we say that, uh, actually... It, the event or the thing was not random, all right? It was not random, you have to work at it. Uh, and yeah, there's a whole philosophical conversation about whether there are actually such things in the world as randomness. I think the current physics uh, belief is that there is really something like randomness in the world at the atomic level that we cannot predict. And we'll, we can talk more about that. But in any case, so, um, an SRS, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you think of an SRS, picture drawing names from a hat to remind yourself an SRS does not favor any part of population. So basically, for us, simple random sample, random sampling in statistics means remove bias. So I remove my bias from the equation, okay? I'm not favoring any part. And favoring a part would be bias. So I'm not biased in favoring any part of the population. That's what we really mean by random sampling. Removing our own personal bias and letting chance decide. Uh, okay, so how do you do such a thing? How do I take a random sample? Um, we really use a computer, okay, in the real world. Uh, obviously, we have to prepare for an exam, and so we cannot use a computer on an exam. We're going to have a calculator. So we'll teach you how to do that, too. And then uh, if you don't have technology, you use a table of random digits, okay? Now, uh, here are the properties of a table of random digits. I don't feel like it's too important to go over all that or that you really know all that. I mean, that's okay. You can read that and see if you understand it. That's fine. Uh, in our particular textbook, they call the random number table, table D, which is the paper I gave you in class. It's also on uh, Schoology if you want to go see it. Um, so, you know, that's one tool. We will do all three. We'll do computer, calculator, and table D. But I have to show you how to do table D in case it comes up on an AP exam or something like that. But in practice, you'll just use a computer. And you can use a simple website, or you can use RStudio, or some other statistical package. Okay? Um, 
So, if you have a physical copy of the textbook, it's also in the back of the textbook. Uh, so, how to choose a simple random sample using table D. Uh, here are some strategies, or the strategy, label each given member of the population. And remember we said member of a population could be an animal, a person, or a thing. Okay. Uh, label each... Like each even give each member of the population a numerical label with the same number of digits. Use as few digits as possible. I will show that to you. And then uh, randomize read consecutive groups of digits of the appropriate length from left to right across a line in table D. Uh, ignore any group of digit that wasn't used as a label or that duplicates a label already in the sample. Stop when you've chosen how many individuals you set out to choose and then your sample contains the individuals whose labels you find okay uh, that might seem pretty complicated it's actually not that bad okay so here's some tips um, use the shortest labels that will cover your population all right we'll explain that uh, reading groups of digits in the table gives all individuals the same chance to be chosen because all labels of the same length have the same chance to be found in the table. So that's that definition of uh, uh, simple random sample again. And we'll talk about that. And then ignore any group of digit that was not used as a label or that duplicates labels. So things that are not part of your numbering scheme or that are duplicates, ignore them. And software can do that easily. Your calculator can do that easily too, for the most part. And then uh, you can technically do anything but read from left to right like we normally do in the random number table. So table D looks like this. Okay, here it is. And you pick a line number to start reading and you just read numbers. So let's say I wanted to pick five people at random. Okay, so I number the people. Person one, person two, person three, person four, and person five, okay? And so what we're trying to say is that since I'm only picking five individuals, I only need one digit to represent an each person as a number. So my uh, uh, random numbers I'm gonna read from the table of random digits, table D in this case, uh, will be one digit long. And so what I do is I just start on a line. So pick a line. So I, let's say we pick line 109. And I'll just start reading one-digit numbers until I find uh, each of these numbers there. Okay. Um, and so... Wait, am I saying that correctly? Uh, I wonder if I'm saying that correctly. If I want to select, uh, hmm, now I've got myself confused. Interesting. Always use shortest labels. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> you can read digits. Uh -huh. Okay. Oh, oh, that's that's what I just said is kind of uh, incorrect. Uh, let's say I want to pick here. Here's my population, and I want to pick two of those people. Okay. Which two do I pick? That's the question. Okay, so this is my population and I want to pick two people, <laughs> right? Which two do I pick? So I go randomly, I start on a, a line number and I just read the first two, uh, uh, the first, I find the first two single digit numbers that are in my population, okay? So if I'm doing this here, I would go to three and say, is three a person in my population? Yes, so the first person part of my sample is person three okay and then i'd go number six six is not a person in my population so i can't use six and then zero zero is not a person in my population zero is not a person in my population nine isn't either the next person i pick is number one ah so person one so these are the two people that i picked uh, randomly from the population okay person three and person one. That's how the random number table works for single digit numbers, all right? So, um, of course, that changes depending on your population and your sample, all that kind of stuff. So, 
Uh, sorry if I confused anybody there for a second. I certainly seem to have confused myself. So, so um, let's do example five, all right? Example five says choosing an SRS with table D. All right, here's my population. The school newspaper is planning an article on family-friendly places to stay over spring break. The editors intend to call four randomly chosen hotels. They have alphabetized a list of 28 hotels in the town. So this is my uh, population. And from there, I want to pick a sample of four. Okay. So use table D at line 130 to choose an SRS simple random sample of four hotels. Okay. So here's the thing. They've numbered the hotels for us. Because there are 28 of them, I need at least two digits. So because I need at least two digits for the biggest numbered hotel, therefore I need to number all of my hotels with two digits. So I can't start with one, I have to start with zero, 01, zero, 02, and then continue until I get to the end where all the hotels have the same number of digits in their number. Okay, That's, that's this part right here. Uh, the shortest labels that will cover your population. Um, so, the shortest number of digits I can use for 28 hotels is two digits. But everybody must have the same length of digits in their number. All right? Uh, let me erase all this junk. All right, so let's go to table D and do it. We want to pick, starting at line 130, we want to pick four hotels that are in between 0, 01 and 28. <laughs> So we go here and we say, okay, uh, line 130 is down here, all right, 130. And so I'm going to look for labels between 0, 01 and 28. So we start. 6, 9, that's not a number in our range, okay? 0, 5, that works. So this is out, but that works, 0, 5. So you would say my first hotel that I'm choosing is number 0, 5. Okay, uh, and that corresponds to Beach Castle. All right, so you say 05, which is Beach Castle. Okay, and then second one, let's keep going. All right, so 05, then I have 16, 16. Well, 16 is also in my range, so 16 is my second hotel that I select. 16, and that one would be. Radisson. Okay, and then two more. I've got two, I need four, two more. Okay, so keep going on that line. Uh, then I have four, eight. Nope, that doesn't work. One, seven. Ooh, one, seven works. One, seven's in my range. So I go back here. One, seven is the Ramada. Okay, so one, seven is the Ramada. That would be part of my sample. From the population uh, and then keep going okay keep going okay one seven then i have eight seven no one seven is a repeat so i ignore that 40 is not in my range F oh sorry i went a little bit too far there 95 is not in my range one seven is a repeat again 84 doesn't work 53 doesn't work 40 doesn't work uh, 64 doesn't work, 89 doesn't work, thank goodness. 87, ah, number 20. Number 20 is in my range, and number 20 is in fact C club, okay? So 20 is C club. So those are the four hotels in my sample that I picked from the population of all 28 hotels, all right? So doing this with your calculator, um, is very simple. Um, you know, you can do this command right here, rand int 128.4. Problem with that command is this is with replacement. In other words, I can pick the same hotel twice. But we don't want to do that most of the time. We don't want to pick the same, be able to pick the same hotel twice. So if you have the TI-84 plus CE, then I think you have this command right here, rand int no rep, which takes away the repetition or the replacement, okay? So uh, I'm gonna show you that. You go here to math, 
uh, I think it's probability and then there it is okay rand int no rep rand int no rep you go there and lower bound is one okay so here I don't have to care about the same length of digits 0 1 to 0 to uh, you know to 28 you just tell the lowest number is hotel number one and the highest number is hotel number 28 and how many do I need okay and I need four and enter enter gives you that command enter and there's my four hotels okay so in this case what I just got here is 27 26 5 and 15 so I would go 27 26 5 and 15 based on my calculator and that would be I don't really want to write it all down but 27 26 uh, 5 and 15 would be 5 ooh, 5 got selected twice and 15 okay 5 and 15 so those are the four hotels that would make be part of this random sample that I took okay uh, and if you don't have that actually there's another strategy here and that is that you if you don't have um, the rand int no rep you can actually force your calculator just to reorder make an ordered list of all the hotels at random and then you just pick the first four and that command is this one rand int and just make your calculator select everyone randomly in an in and list them in in the random order okay so you can go math uh, num uh, probability and just do rand int if you don't have the rand in no rep and then just pick everyone one two 28 and randomly pick everyone and that'll give you a long list of all 28 uh, all I have to say about this is you see this little arrow here to the right please after you do something like this and you see a list that goes off screen you can't hit any other button except right to look at the list otherwise you won't be able to see the list Okay, so if I do anything now besides go to the right, I won't see the rest of the list. But I don't need that because I only need the first four here. So a random ordering of every number between 1 and 28 gave me 12, 21, 2, and 10. So that would be my first four numbers in my sample then. It'll make up my sample. Okay, so that's how you do that. And here's what I'm talking about. If I don't go right and now I do something else, let's say I push down or something. Uh, let me enter uh, let me do something else I can't go back up here and look through my list of numbers maybe they fix that no I can't so let's see if I can bring it back down yeah there's not really anything I can do to look back through this set of numbers here okay so that's that's just be careful with that um, all right so that's how I do it on there and then uh, thank you Bell uh, we want to do this with R Studio. Okay, R Studio is definitely ten times more powerful than any of this. And there's the command in R Studio to pick four numbers and then pick your matching four hotels. And so in R Studio, you just do sample one to twenty-eight four and don't replace. We don't want to replace hotels. And so you just do that sample uh, one to twenty-eight. Give me four and say replace place equals false thoughts. Okay. Oh, oh, what isn't it like? Oh, ray place. There we go. Uh, replace equals false, and there you go. Okay. Now, R Studio does all kinds of amazing things. Uh, actually, I just made a little variable here called first names, I think is what it's called. First names first yeah and if you look at this you'll see there's like 500 names here okay and R studio can do things like if you have a variable with actual names in it you can just sample the names directly you don't even have to number the names so you just do sample uh, names uh, first names uh, and say give me I don't know 15 and replace is false okay 
and it will just sample 15 names from a list of names. So you don't even have to number the names or anything like that. So uh, software, way better way of uh, sampling randomly, all kinds of power there in our studio. Okay. Any case, I hope this was useful for you guys and that this helps you to do your um, homework. Uh, and then read over this carefully, please. If you don't sample randomly, then it has very, very big implications for your study design. All right? And we'll talk more about this next class. Thank you.